Welcome to the Healthcare Unfiltered Express, where I conduct short video interviews packed with relevant and timely information that you cannot miss. So sit back and enjoy the show. Folks, I'm very excited because I have the the, the, the master, Enrique Grande, with me on the Healthcare Unfiltered uh, Podcast, Express Podcast. And we're doing this. It's a very interesting because we're doing this while he's in a car. So but I am not driving. Let's say thank God. I mean, we did have to ask him to pull a little bit on the side. For those who are listening, <laughs> Dr. Grande is in a car. For those who are watching, they can appreciate the fact he's in a car. Listen, I thought you can have like your own limo- limousine driver and you just sit in the back and everything. I was trying. I was trying to become the Dr. Chadis in Spain, but oh, yeah. I couldn't. <laughs> yeah, sure. You mean Schwery, Schwery, not Chadis. <laughs> Schwery. Um, Enrique, it was so good to, uh, we really couldn't connect in person at ESMO. Like there's 30,000 people and sometimes, unfortunately, everybody is so busy. But uh, it was a great meeting. So many practice changing data uh, across a lot of solid tumors. Probably not a lot in kidney. We're going to talk about that. But the goal is to discuss what data from ESMO may have been very impactful in kidney cancer, although I know you're going to allude to some data that came a little bit after ESMO. So the floor is yours. Tell us what happened in kidney cancer. Well, I think that there was nothing really changing our practice for tomorrow, presented at at ESMO in the field of uh, kidney cancer, you know, but there were some very good data or at least very interesting data Uh, particularly the one combining lembatinib plus pembrolizumab plus belzutifan in first line. It was a very, very complicated clinical trial. I think Dr. Cristina Suarez did a wonderful job trying to compare uh, four different arms, uh, lembatinib, pembro versus uh, a LAC3 inhibitors, a TIGID inhibitor, a belzutifan, a, the CTLA4 compound. So it was a, it was a really mess. I, I, I still struggle myself thinking about how Christina could deal and could drive us through all this data, all these different combinations, you know, and at the end, very complicated design. But what is the summary? The summary is that probably, probably adding adding belsutifan, the hif 2 alpha inhibitor on top of lembatinib pembro could be a very good option for patients, not really in the amount of patients that are responding in first line clear cell renal cell carcinoma, but because of the duration of the response, the longer progression free survival and, and a, a very good trend into an overall survival improvement. And why I'm highlighting this? I am highlighting this not because of any data presented at ESMO, but because of two press releases, Chadi, that we have just seen one week after ESMO. Really, really impactful two press releases because there were there will be two uh, phase three studies that have uh, released some very positive data in a press release form that probably will be practice changing. The two light spark trial, the one in the adjuvant setting, combining pembrolizumab plus belzutifan versus pembrolizumab in the adjuvant scenario. And we know because of this press release that the trial is positive for disease-free survival. So for the first time, we will have something positive against a pembrolizumab, something against active impacting in the overall survival. Don't forget about that. So probably HIF2-alpha inhibitors will be uh, well, uh, the, the next hot topic in the field of uh, kidney cancer. And the second uh, press release that we have is the combination of lembatinib plus belzutifan impacting in progression free survival versus the, the currently considered standard of care, which is uh, cabosantinib as a monotherapy in patients refractory to one prior immune checkpoint inhibitor. So um, two settings, two different clinical scenarios, a probably practice changing, we, of course, we will need to see the data, we will need to see the magnitude of the benefit, uh, we have only two press releases, but uh, the conclusion and the main highlight coming from ESMO and the week post-ESMO is that belzutifan HIF2-alpha inhibitor are here to stay, 
because uh, I don't know if you agree with me, Chadi, but when we saw for the first time the results of the LightSpark 05, the, the one with Belsutifam single agent versus Everolimus in patients heavily pretreated in like three, four prior lines of treatment, well, there was an impact in responses, an impact in progression, free survival, but uh, not an impact in overall survival that, well, I, I was a little bit cold when I saw these results. This is also true that in the daily practice, when you are using Belsutifan, the quality of life of the patients are really, really improving. But this is not translated into longest progression-free survival or longest clear impact in the, in the overall survival. So, Chadi, this is my, my summary of ESMO. We have uh, other, other, other trials reporting some can I, uh, biomarkers. Can I, can I like ask you a bit about, can I just ask you a little bit on the sure. Belsutivan plus Pembro in the adjuvant setting? Was this uh, in high-risk RCC uh, <clears throat> or all comers of RCC post-surgery? In intermediate and high-risk. Okay. Intermediate and high risk. So, we, of course, we will need to dissect the data once sure. they are they are coming out. Hopefully, by ASCO GU, uh, we will we will have some some news in this regard. Uh, we will see the trend in the overall survival because, uh, of course, disease-free survival is great, particularly against an active comparator like pembrolizumab. This is the primary endpoint of the study, but uh, I think we will need some um, some trend. Uh, for overall survival improvement. Otherwise, I, I guess it will be a little bit tough for the company to get the approval, uh, at least in Europe, without a, a clear impact or at least a trend, a clear trend to impact in the overall survival, yeah. you know, despite this is a secondary endpoint. And Belzutivan, I mean, it's not, it's not like an agent, it's not like an old agent, somewhat like of a newish of a... Of a Absolutely. Of a, what what type of side effects should people watch for felbuzitivan? Like what what would be a couple of pearls you would give people who are getting to learn this drug? Well, in my experience, when I am using belzutivan, at least in patients refractory to TKI, refractory to uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors in the in the metastatic setting, uh, you need to take to take to, to pay attention to the anemia and asthenia fatigue related to this anemia. This is, this is uh, quite often to, to need for transfusion, to blood transfusion to patient, but this is very well controlled, you know? Uh, on top of the anemia, I don't really see major, major issues. In fact, the other, this is the other way around. This is a very well tolerated medication. Um, the quality of life of patients is improving as soon as you are stopping the tyrosine kinase inhibitor. And there are some patients, and don't ask me why, but there is a subgroup of patients, one out of four, one out of five patients, that are really long-lasting, I wouldn't say responders, but at least good clinical, long-term clinical benefiters from, from these kind of drugs. We need some biomarkers to predict who these patients are in advance. Yeah. Okay. What else? You, I, I interrupted you when I was asking about the risk stratification. A, there, there was a trial uh, trying to correlate, and it was a very, very smart trial trying to correlate the responses of immune checkpoint inhibitors and tyrosine kinase inhibitors uh, in regards to the molecular profile. Uh, particularly those those uh, patients with a molecular profile of the clusters one and two, the so-called proangiogenic clusters. Uh, you know, every time that we talk about biomarkers in the field of metastatic clear cell carcinoma, you know, uh, this is always the same, always the same. Very interesting data. Uh, we, you can do the effort that you want to, huge efforts behind, but at the end, both profiles, proangiogenics and non-proangiogenics, are responding to both tyrosine kinase inhibitors and immune checkpoint inhibitors. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, Chadi, I, I gave up. <laughs> uh, to believe on 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 biomarkers in the field of metastatic kidney cancer, when I saw uh, the checkmate two one four data with nivo EP, you know uh, nivo EP, a combination of two immune checkpoint inhibitors. So, hey, this is great. So so tyrosine kinase inhibitors for those proangiogenic and immune checkpoint doublets for those that are uh, tumor enriched, uh, uh, um, the uh, microenvironment enriched tumors, and you know. Nivo EP is doing better in proangiogenic signatures positive tumors. So, so you say, hey, it doesn't make any sense. I, I don't understand anything. So probably at the end, this is a matter of prognostic rather than predictive for activity. 
So it is, it, is, it is rather interesting that I think kidney cancer is probably lagging behind in terms of actual biomarkers. Uh, I mean, there's like Kim one and, and all that. I mean, I don't know. That's 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 probably has uh, more therapeutic uh, prognostic implications versus therapeutic implication. Or what are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. I think all the biomarkers that we have are more prognostic rather than predictive. And if you have a patient with a good prognosis, he's more likely to respond to whatever you give to the patient, tyrosine kinase yeah. inhibitor, HIF to alpha, uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors, whatever you want to give to the patient, you know, combinations, whatever. If you are treating patients with poor prognosis, no matter what you give to them, it is not easy to rescue them. Only very potent tyrosine kinase inhibitors like lembatinib, no matter if you are combining with everolimus or with immune checkpoint inhibitors, lembatinib will, will, will have more responses but based on the on the potency of the drug rather than the prediction of the biomarker that you are considering so i think in summary before i'll let you go i think you're probably going to dinner or something because it's night but but it seems to me that for kidney cancer post esmo there are no changes in terms of treatment for folks who are listening or watching pending the information you mentioned which we may get some glimpse into it in ASCO GU. Absolutely. Uh, I think we will have two phase three trials that hopefully, hopefully will be uh, able to add something else to the armamentarium. And the main, the main conclusion is that HIF2 alpha, that at the beginning, you know, probably because of the, how these drugs were developed in the field, starting from very late stages and coming up to the recent uh, diagnosis patients or at the, at, the, at the beginning of the disease, you know, probably, uh, probably from the molecular perspective is making more sense. Uh, at the end, kidney cancer is a very angiogenic tumor. So probably uh, targeting angiogenesis, targeting uh, HIF2 alpha, and the, the chances to be combined because of the safety profile with immune checkpoint inhibitors and with tyrosine kinase inhibitors, with Pembro and with lembatinib, probably and the good tolerability profile uh, is making that our patients may have more chances to respond and the duration of the response, the quality of the response is better and that can be translated into longer uh, clinical benefit, or at least longer time, the tumor is the tumor growth is well controlled. I think this is the, 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 the most important conclusion and what we can expect shortly in the field of kidney cancer. Dr. Enrique Grande, thank you so much for visiting with me on Healthcare Unfiltered Express. Chadi, it's always a great pleasure, a honor, and I love every time that I have the opportunity to talk to you. Thanks, my friend. Thank you for listening to this edition of the Healthcare Unfiltered Express. Until next time, take care.